Hey everyone, hope you're well, and welcome to Riff Battle 1979, wherein we'll have a look at the top 10 greatest guitar riffs from that awesome year, and then you guys can vote for your favorite down below in the comments section. You know, if you like, or not, uh, but please do. Uh, this will be my last video in this series covering the 70s, which was obviously crammed with loads of great classic rock guitar riffs from each year, and it was a real treat and a heck of a lot of fun learning and playing them all. Uh, I just may put together a top 100 video of all of these 70s riffs in the coming week or two, cram them all into one 20-minute video and see how it does uh, here on the old YouTubes. Maybe hit that elusive algorithm them, which hasn't uh, helped me out a whole heck of a lot over the past four years or so. Uh, but first up today, and before we get started with 1979, we need to go back to my 1978 video from a few weeks ago and choose a winner. And that winner is played on this very guitar, if I'm not mistaken, none other than this one. In other places oh, But the horns They blow in that sound Way on down south Guitar George, he knows all the chords. A fantastic choice, uh, I think it goes without saying. Almost a lock going in, really. Uh, however, Eddie Van Halen, with the riff to Ain't Talking About Love, gave Sultans a good run for it, but in the end, Sultans took it by about seven or eight votes. With Riff Raff by ACDC, Life's Been Good by Joe Walsh, and La Villa Strangiato by Alex Lifeson and Rush, all tying for third. All right then, 1979, and I'm telling you right now that I had a heck of a hard time not breaking my own rule that no band or guitarist gets two entries per year per list. But God damn, did Van Halen 2 have just a ton of great guitar riffs on it. Uh, it was really hard to nail it down to just one, but uh, in the end, I decided not to break my own self-imposed rule and went with my favorite riff from Van Halen 2, the incredible uh, melodic earworm of a riff from one of Van Halen's more lightweight, uh, radio-friendly tracks from this late 70s era of the band. You no doubt uh, know the one I'm talking about here, this is the opening riff to Dance the Night Away as my 1979 contender number one. Alright then, contender number two, 159, 159, 159, 159. Repeat. Uh, this deceptively simple yet tricky to play uh, famous riff was actually composed by the bass player of this band and not the guitar player. That bass player I speak of is Sting of The Police, and the riff we're talking about here is the classic to The Police's Message in a Bottle. 
Uh, it's obviously just an incredible hook, uh, and fun as hell to play with its uh, finger-stretching spider-like arpeggio shifts from one triad to the next. Uh, a simple idea at its core from a standpoint of theory, uh, but so incredibly clever in its construction and execution, and it makes this catchy as hell riff easily one of the greatest guitar riffs of all time. Let's give it a quick listen. This is Message in a Bottle with Andy Summers and the Police. Good then, on to contender number three. For contender number three, we have a guy who's been here before a couple of times already on these lists, and he's back again. That man is my personal favorite rock star of all time, Mr. Joe Walsh. Uh, now, I'm not the biggest Eagles fan in the world. However, I do have my favorites of theirs. It just so happens that my three or four favorite Eagle tracks of all time are all either Joe Walsh penned or Joe Walsh sung. This one that we'll be looking at today is pretty basic as far as riffs go, but it's arguably the heaviest track the Eagles ever recorded. And of course, at its helm, both on guitar and vocals, is my buddy Joe Walsh. So without a doubt whatsoever, it's going on my list. Let's check out what it is. All right, contender number four, uh, gonna follow one pretty basic riff with another here, uh, but it's high time I gave this guitarist some love, as I like his playing a hell of a lot, but thus far on my channel over the past few years, I've yet to feature his playing in any way. Well, today's the day, and pretty soon on my channel, we're gonna dig into this guy's soloing prowess, but for today, we'll need to be content with the riff from one of his most famous tracks. A uh, bit of a dark horse here, and a riff not nearly as famous as most of the others. However, like I said, today we're giving this guy some much-deserved love and attention. This is the late, great Irishman Rory Gallagher, and the opening to his track, Bad Penny, as contender number four.
to contender number five. Uh, they've been here before, they're here again. And I don't see that slowing down for a number of these lists going forward into the 80s. I can only be talking about Angus and Malcolm Young of ACDC, uh, creators of some of the most classic and memorable hard rock guitar riffs of all time. 1979 saw the release of the band's incredibly successful and riff-filled Highway to Hell album. There's any number of great guitar riffs to choose from from this album, and most others would choose the title track as the album's most famous and classic riff. Not here, however. Uh, I'm going with something else. The best riff on Highway to Hell, in my humble opinion. Uh, it's a riff heavily influenced, some would say stolen, uh, from Peter Green, Fleetwood Mac's 1969 track, Oh Well. Uh, the similarity of these two riffs is really unmistakable. But hey, you know, if you're going to borrow or, or take influence or steal uh, a riff, there aren't many riffs better than Peter Green and Fleetwood Mac's Oh Well. Let's check out our contender number five and see what riff I'm talking about here. Good then, as uh, contender number six, we have David Gilmore and Pink Floyd finally getting a spot on one of these lists. Uh, now, as you guys probably know by now, I'm just a little bit of a David Gilmore head. Uh, yet, like I just said, so far, I've yet to include him on any of these riff videos throughout the 70s. Now, there's a reason for that, of course. Uh, despite Gilmore's incredible soloing prowess, Pink Floyd were just not much of a riff-driven band, uh, especially in the 70s. You know, believe me, I wanted them here. Uh, I, I went through every Pink Floyd track every year for every list and just couldn't find a riff worthy of including. Uh, the closest that I came was the riff to Money from Dark Side of the Moon, but truth be told, that's very much a bass guitar riff, uh, that the guitar is just bass basically accompanying, and uh, fairly low in the mix at that. But now we've got one, uh, finally, uh, something we can call an actual proper uh, Pink Floyd guitar riff. It's from 1979's The Wall, and it's the riff to that album's David Gilmore pen track, Run Like Hell. Let's check it out, y'all know this one. On to contender number seven. In the contender number seven slot, we have another band who were extremely popular and active throughout the 70s, who also didn't have a standout riff that I felt that I could include until 
this 1979 gem. Again, I listened to every track on their previous seven or eight albums and nothing jumped out at me as being particularly stellar from a riff standpoint. Some fantastic music was to be found, uh, for sure, but no outstanding riffs, in my opinion. That band is Thin Lizzy, and with the addition of Irish guitar phenom Gary Moore in 78-79, we finally got some fantastic guitar riffs to go along with the great music that Thin Lizzy were pumping out at the time. That would continue into the 80s uh, with John Sykes, who would go on to replace Gary Moore when he parted the band, so expect more cool Thin Lizzy riffs on the next few lists in the near future. But for now, let's check this one out. Alright then, contender number eight on our list, and Motorhead for the first time. Now, the problem with Motorhead riffs is that they're predominantly bass-driven riffs that start the songs off, and if they're not, they're usually pretty basic two or three chord riff progressions. This one is one of those two chord riffs, but with some added trills and double stops to spice things up and give it a bit more life. It's one of my very favorite Motorhead riffs, and it's all guitar getting this one going, so uh, it's going on the list. This is Bomber by Fast Eddie Clark and Motorhead at number eight. Contender number nine and Richie Blackmore is back in the mix again, this time with some late 70s Rainbow content. Now, Rainbow went through a number of lead vocalists through the years, and in 1979, it was Graham Bonnet who stepped in to fill those duties for just one single album, 79's Down to Earth, before being replaced by Jolyn Turner as the 70s rolled into the 80s. I've always loved uh, Graham Bonnet's voice, but I just assumed that this 1979 release was one of Rainbow's least successful and lesser known albums overall. However, I personally have always loved this one particular track from that album. And much to my surprise, when I decided to include this riff on my list, I looked this track up on Spotify and it is far and away the most played Rainbow track overall by quite a bit, uh, so I felt a little bit justified. This is Since You've Been Gone by Richie Blackmore and Rainbow at number nine.
let's finish up with contender number 10. Billy Gibbons and ZZ Top are back at it once again with another great riff. This time from 1979's De Guelo album. This riff, whether intentional, inspired by, or just simply by chance, is very similar to the Rolling Stones riff to their track Hot Stuff, released three years previously. Uh, seriously. Go listen to Hot Stuff by the Stones, very similar riffs. However, Gibbons' version has significantly more distortion, gained through a blown tube amplifier to achieve its signature crunch. And add in Gibbons' uh, trademark Boogie Woogie Blues take on the riff, and you've got what is generally considered one of Gibbons' most well-known refrains to open a track. This is the opening riff to Cheap Sunglasses from 1979's De Guelo as my contender, number 10. Sell some cheap sunglasses. The cheap sunglasses. Well, that's it. Uh, that's all I got for 1979. I certainly hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please drop a comment for your favorite down below in the comments. And we'll keep this train rolling into the 80s in a couple of weeks when we have a look at 1980. Uh, the 80s should be fun. Uh, it goes without saying that there were loads of fantastic rock and metal uh, guitar riffs pumped out during the 80s as hard rock and metal jumped heavily into the mainstream during that decade. And there were just loads of bands uh, might get a bit overwhelming at times, but uh, we'll get her done and choose some of the best to cover and highlight on future lists. Thank you, as always, for watching and following along and for your input on these videos. Uh, it means a lot, and I certainly appreciate it. Uh, that and all the kind words that you throw my way. Uh, hope you're well out there in your little guitar corner of the world, wherever that may find you. Uh, take care of yourselves and those around you, and we'll... We'll see you next time. Cheers.